Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, we are here today to be talking about asking for help. Um, we hear it all the time. Nah, I'm good. I can handle this on my own. But the question we want you to be thinking about is, should I? I'm Jean McCormack, resource psychologist in the Division of Psychological Services, and I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Kim Kachubo. I'm a school counselor. I work at Quince Orchard High School. Welcome. And we're thrilled that you took the time to be with us today. We're going to be going through um, a few things like why students don't ask for help. We're also going to be talking about when is it time to ask for help. Also looking at who can you turn to when you do need some support. And then after you ask for help, what happens? Okay. And last but not least, we want to leave you with an action plan. What signs are you looking for? Who are you turning to? And what will you say? But really, why don't people ask for help? We know that help looks different, though, to many different people. So we went to the street to see what young people really think about asking for help. All right, so why do you think nobody asks for help? I think nobody asks for help because there's like a negative stigma behind it and like you look, they feel like they look weak when they ask for help. They seem weak and they kind of want to get through things by themselves so they seem persistent and strong. To me, help looks like, like asking a trusted adult for help. Well, what does help look like to you? To me, it looks like somebody not judging you for not doing something and being positive about it rather than like thank you. When somebody will give you advice or show you how to do something so then you can go do it yourself and do it properly. What do you do? To me help looks like like asking a trusted adult for help. So often when we work with young people, we hear all the time that there is a negative stigma around asking for help and that mental health is not something we're allowed to talk about with others. Um, and that people, you know, may be looked at as being weak or, um, you know, as having a problem if they, admit that they need help with something or if they want to talk to somebody about a problem they're having. So people don't reach out. They don't ask people for help. Um, and sometimes they just worry like if they ask for help, they won't actually be in control of what it is that is going on in their lives. And so they refuse or they don't reach out. They think, oh, well, I can handle it on my own. Um, and, and sometimes they just fear that maybe they'll be rejected by whoever they reach out to for help. And we're here to talk more about that. And sometimes people just say, it's fine. Oh, I'm fine. Everything's fine. We hear that a lot. But what if it's not fine? What if it's not? What do we do? Absolutely. So when is it time? And the one thing I like to do with mental health is thinking about it in how we compare to physical health, right? And so I think in terms of a paper cut that I have, um, and think about that when you've had a paper cut, you get a little um, nick on your finger or wherever, and it hurts, right? It's bothersome. You might need a Band-Aid. You need a little bit of help. Doesn't mean you need any nothing. You need a little help right? But then let's say you have a bigger paper cut or a bigger cut, right? You need a little bit more support. And so we have to think about that in terms of when do I ask for help? It's okay to ask for help when you have that paper cut. You might need to help finding a Band-Aid. But if you have that broken limb or that gash, you might need to go see a doctor, right? And so with the same thing with mental health, it doesn't always jump to the extreme. It's okay to come down and talk about that paper cut. So thinking in terms of 
What is that paper cut? What are those, those things that you might need a little bit of support with? You're feeling sad occasionally. We all get sad. It's a natural human emotion. Maybe you've been worrying about a test or take, making having a presentation in front of class. That's definitely something we can worry about. You're frustrated with your parents or disappointed about something. Right? You're upset with a friend. And so you may turn to your friends to talk. You may turn to your parents. You turn to those trusted adults, right? But then things get more significant. You're feeling sad and anxious a lot. You're irritated by a lot of things. You're feeling worthless or helpless. You're not able to sleep at night or sleep. You're having feeling you have to sleep all the time. You don't want to go to school or hang out with your friends. You have no energy. Or you're thinking about death and dying. Right? Those are things that you really need to get some help. And that's why we're here to tell you why it's so helpful and why it's so important. And what will you get out of getting help and asking for help? Well, for one, you are going to risk your, um, you're going to reduce your risk for other actual physical and medical issues. Sometimes we hear from people that, you know, when they are suffering or struggling with emotional or mental health challenges, it actually takes a physical toll on your body. So, by asking for help, you're reducing your risk for other medical issues. You can also build better relationships when you reach out for help. And you're teaching yourself how to develop better coping strategies. It will help you to deal with things as you move forward. And the best part about it is you do not have to struggle alone, okay? There are benefits to having someone else there to help you. But, you know, as you heard from our friends in the video, how do you decide who to talk to? Do you have someone already in your circle that you can reach out to? Is there a trusted family member or adult that you can speak to openly? Is there someone that's, you know, there that's not going to judge you that you can go to? Um, maybe it's a, a friend. Maybe it's a school counselor like myself or a school psychologist like Miss McCormack. Um, somebody in your, um, you know, uh, religious or spiritual leader that you know that you could go to or even a coach that you have um, from a sport. Someone that um, you're close with that is a trusted person, okay? A good listener. This is what makes a trusted adult. There's also lots of support groups out there, and there's a helpline that you can call 24-7 or text to that you can always reach someone day or night. And here's a number that you can call. Think about the people in your life that could be a trusted adult. Maybe it's even your media specialist or a teacher, or maybe it's even the coach. Hopefully there's someone in your world that is a trusted adult that you can go to when you need to ask for help. Awesome. And if you don't feel like you have someone Please know there's people who want to be that person for you. People like Ms. Kachuba and myself, seek us out. If you don't know who your counselor is or your school psychologist, ask someone. It is okay. You can feel better, right? So one of the things that I hear a lot from students is I don't want to ask for help because you're going to have to tell me my parents. I don't want to ask for help because I don't want you to think I'm crazy. I don't want to ask for help because I don't want to be hospitalized, right? But I want to debunk some of those myths. What happens when you ask for help? Well, you have someone to listen to you, which sometimes that's all we need is just to have somebody to hear what we're experiencing and to validate it. You are able to get out what's been on your mind. And again, that is a really helpful tool. If you haven't tried it, try talking about what you're experiencing and it, experience that just talking about it can be helpful. You will, you can get more help if needed. Okay. So I mentioned one of those myths that 
just because you come talk to somebody doesn't mean we automatically have to turn around and talk to your parents and tell your parents. You may have heard there are some limits to that confidentiality, right? If you are thinking about hurting, harming, or killing yourself, if someone is hurting you, or if you plan to hurt someone else, we do have to share that with your family. But if you're having some of those, you know, Band-Aid problems, some of those things that are starting to bother you, and you're not at risk of hurting yourself, we are here to listen, okay? It does not mean that you're automatically going to get hospitalized. I promise you, we want to do everything we can to help you feel better. And one thing that also is so true about mental health is people don't always feel like they can feel better. We know that when I break my arm, I'm gonna get a cast and I will feel better in a few months. But with mental health, you don't always feel that way. So as mental health professionals, Ms. Kachuba and I are here to tell you that there is light on the other side of the tunnel. Tunnel. You just have to have the right support in place. And that's why we are here to help with that. So I want you to think about for yourself and for your friends, thinking about what are some of those signs that you're looking for that Ms. Kachuba and I mentioned? Who might you turn to? Who are those trusted adults? I want you to think about what might you say? And I remember one student came down and has had a whole list of questions listed out. And I thought that that was so brilliant because I don't know about you, but when I get nervous or I'm trying something new, I don't always remember everything I wanna say. So writing out what might you say, what might you ask? And then one thing we haven't talked a lot about is how you care for your mental health every day. What are some of those small things that you do that help bring you joy, that keep, make you happy and healthy? Are you eating? Are you sleeping? Are you moving your body? Do it, I want you to leave today and to commit to doing at least one thing that makes you smile, that helps care for your mental health. So we are so grateful that you took the time to spend with us today to talk about asking for help. We hope that you have learned some new information and feel like you are in a position where you can come and talk to somebody about how you're feeling and um, to get help when needed. Okay? So please know we are available if you have any questions for us. Come down, email us, come down and see us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and please don't be afraid to reach out for help. Thank you.